Shin is making the most noise, just send them in. Cheers. It's a bit daft, though, in a studio here, isn't it? The walls uh, are paper thin, aren't they? Uh, well, this is not an ideal situation. Well, this is my house. <laughs> Pleasure. Um, can you, in your album, <coughs> you to it. What, what is the title uh, explaining the light user syndrome? I got it off uh, British Telecom. So it refers to people who don't use their phone very much? No, it's like about bump mail or really. mm. rubbish you get through the door. Mm. Mm. Why would you kind of associate your own with bump mail? Well, I was trying to make the LPs like a bit topical because we do do a lot of LPs, so we try and bring out like two a year. So. It's quite self deprecating though, really, to compare your albums to um, junk mail. No, I just like to make them topical, you know. I haven't listened to the full for about 10 years, but the last album I had mm -hmm. was Ben Sinister, which... How old are you, 34? No, 26. Uh, I was quite young at the time. Uh, <laughs> it's a really full album. It's, it's, it hasn't, you haven't changed your style that much. You reckon? Well, in 10 years, I can... I mean, I've missed out a lot, but I can see that you de definitely do have a very distinct style. Um, the fans won't be disappointed, does that... Why do, you, why do you think it still sounds like you? Couldn't tell you, right? How do you mean? You kind of set yourself up for this particular sound and you've never really kind of... Yeah, I just thought it was a bit, bit lazy, that, I think. Lazy journalism. Okay. Um, what I tried to do with this LP is, like, get... Um, the three women in the group forward a bit more, and I got I got the uh, second drummer singing a bit more. I wanted to get it, but so I I don't have to do as much really. So it's not just me ranting in, uh, at the front. Is that what you think you do? Because got three or four singers, you know. There, so I was trying to bring him up. Yeah, Whether it works or not, I don't know. You know. If you listen to it, you'll find that. You know. No, I think it does work. I, mean, I only do vo lead vocals in about three quarters of it. Like, you know. Bricks is back in the band after a five-year break, and uh, her, she's very strong in the mix there. Her, you know, her style is just, you can't really... Oh, she makes sure of that, yeah. Mm. So how, how did it feel for that five years when she wasn't part of the band? She's great, she's really good. She's, I think she's the best guitar player on the road, actually. Personal considerations apart, you know, she's great. So, so a lot of people in America don't take us very seriously, you know. Why, why do you think that? Well, she doesn't dress like a scruff, you know, like you've got to be, uh, in America, if you want to be a heavy rock, you've got to be like a sonic youth and all that, you know, sort of drone away on the guitar. They don't like her because she's a bit of a valley girl and all that, you know. But the fall fans like her, so that's my thing. I mean, I, I don't know if you really realise how much of an influence you've had on a lot of bands. Like, if I, you know, I know what Fall sounds like. I listen to people like the, the Pixies or the Breeders, and they've almost stolen your style. Stolen, yeah, but versus, yeah. Took me teaser. Yeah, Cheers, Tim. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> He's great, Tim, isn't he? Top <laughs> lad. Do you, do you kind of, do you find that a compliment? That no, not really. No. How do you feel about it? You've been plugging away and someone else kind of comes out from a different perspective. Almost kind of I don't know, I'm just, I'm just very suspicious of people who haven't gotten their own ideas, you know, who's open. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, mean, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I've listened to, I don't know if you listen to any dance music or anything like that, but... There's Very band, much, yeah. There's a band called Yeah. And the, the vocalists. What I like about the dance dance groups is that they actually acknowledge the influence. What I don't like about these other groups is they never acknowledge it. They always say we, we were influenced by uh, Scott Walker and all this crap.
crap, because they've got the like drum patterns that I wrote, you know, on the records. You know. Whereas dance bands actually come out and say it, which I think is good. I mean, with Underworld, his kind of, the singer Carl Hyde, the way he delivers his vocals, and it's all quite kind of distorted and... That's right, oh yeah, right, I know, yeah, that's right, it is, yeah, mm -hmm. But I don't mind that. What I don't like is, is uh, theft, you know. Okay. Um, so your singing style, it's almost like talking, is it? Did you, did you ever try to sing, or is it just the way, that's the way you deliver your message? I can sing if I want, you know. I think I've just got a strong voice over like 10, 12 years. It's got a lot stronger. Yeah, it's very, um, it's very well, a lot of the time, I, I, I shout a lot of the time, because uh, just to get the band worked up. Uh -huh. So you're almost like a kind of band leader who will end Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright then, your lyrics. Difficult, because the band is so noisy. I would really like you to print your lyrics on mm -hmm. your album sleeve to actually kind of just see what you are saying exactly. You get like nuances of what you're saying, and ideas float into your head from what I can hear. But are they really kind of spontaneous? How do you go about writing your lyrics? Do you make them up as you go along, or are they really? That's sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I think it's but, but sometimes it's good to go off the wall, you know. A lot, a lot of it with that LP. I'll, I'll tell you the God's honest truth here. A lot of it was uh, half, of, half of those vocals on that LP are, are just guide vocals. <laughs> and I took a day off from the studio and I came back and they mixed the, mixed the bugger in. <laughs> but uh, on, on uh, retrospect, this sound, it sounds good. If I'd have gone back in and sort of smoothed them out, I don't think it would have been a good. So. so where do you, when you sit down to write something, where do you kind of go first? I wouldn't really ask you what your inspiration is. I kind of want to ask you what, where do you, from where do you get your reactions from? Yeah, well, my problem is just uh, keeping stuff out of the songs, you know. I think um, one thing with the fall, like five, ten years ago, was uh, put too many words in it. It's different, people have changed a lot, I think. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I'm trying to, get back a bit, it's like when I'm trying to bring the two girls in, the three girls in and um, other members of the band, they don't like it but you know, you try and force them to the front, so they've almost got a type of sort of family show going there, you know. Is, is that a you know, I, I don't think people just want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to be like everything else at the moment, you know, just me sort of shouting on about my viewpoints. So, so what I'm saying is I deliberately sort of edit myself. Is that a change in your... You know, yeah, for sure. <coughs> really yeah, yeah, I mean, well, I can do it. I like doing it, but uh, I think people's, uh, you know, our fans are getting younger and younger, that's what I like about that. Mm -hmm. And we're getting rid of a lot of the old fans in the mid-30s, which is good. I was going to ask you about that. So I just, you know, I, I could just walk off stage now and, like, uh, they, they all go crackers about it, you know, the, the old fans, but the young fans love it, you know, because you can only, can only hear so much, can't you? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I think. I was going to ask you about where you think your fans, do you think your fans are growing up older with you, or are you...? Well, we've got rid of them, thank God, you know, so it's good. Getting rid of them. Don't you find that, that you're not relating to your own... Yeah. Age group, yeah. Uh, no, I think it's good. Because, you know, I mean, it's, it's like a lot of fans, you know. I mean, if you take any notice, I, mean, I never take any notice of them anyway, what they think, you know. So. Mm. So I think but, you know, if, if they had their way, I'd just be doing, like, uh, Totally Wired all the time, you know. I'd just be doing songs from 1983 over and over again. You know. Never really followed that course. Yeah. That's why I have to get rid of a lot of musicians, you know, because musicians are very... Uh, I just want to do all the hits all the bloody time, you know, they've always been like that. Because I'm not a musician, you see. Yeah, it's very, I think it must be quite hard for someone who has a vision and a way that they want to go musically, but then their fans kind of 
lose lose sight of that vision and don't follow the vision through, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And then you do have to start relating to younger people because it's stuff you're doing. Well, it's not particularly ageist, you know what I mean? It's, our fans come from all over the place. That was the whole idea of the fall. The fall wasn't like a... They never set out to be a student group or anything. Mm. In fact, students don't like us, you know. I mean, I'm quite pleased about that, really. Why do you think that is? Well, because they, they listen to music for two or three years, don't they? Then they go and become accountants, don't they? Most of our fans are like shop workers and bus conductors and that, and um, all really dotty old fellas. So. so, what do you think about politics? But I don't really know what to ask you about politics because I don't think you've ever actually. Well, have you ever done an interview before? Sorry. You've done you've done interviews before. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, right. I mean, it was the last person you did. Eddie Reader. Scottish girl. Is she? Red-headed. Fairground attack attraction. She's now a solo artist. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, I interviewed Terry Hall once and he freaked the life out of <laughs> me. You know. He's a bit sinister, isn't he? Oh, yeah, a little bit. He just didn't really say very much. Um, but I don't think you... Have you kind of ever aligned yourself to anything political, like a movement or anything? Or you've always seemed to stood on your own, saying your own thing about your own background. You haven't kind of done a thing like the Paul Weller, Red Wedge, or Billy No, Blair. no. Why? How come? You're just happy to say what you think, and that's it? Well, no, I mean, I, I used to work on the docks, you know, when I was like 15, 16, and I rapidly disillusioned with the Labour Party, you know, very quickly. Mm. So do you, do you have any stands politically? Or? Not particularly, no. I do. No. <laughs> I just kind of thought that with your the things you write about. Oh yeah, I know. Sorry. I'm trying to just kind of get where you stand. I, I kind of realised that you are more of an kind of an independent. Well, when I started the group, I was I was I, I was extremely communist, you know, extremely. I mean, was, you know, to the point where you know you think Paul Weller's like a fascist, you know. I mean, that, that's the way I was brought up, you know. So. I still am a bit of a communist, you know, I think. <laughs> I just kind of, if you look at who's come up alongside you, you know, the Yeah, well, they, they, always, well they, and they always drop it very quickly, I've noticed as well, when it becomes unfashionable. You know. Paul Weller drops it very quickly in the 80s when the Thatcher was in, you know. now he's adopting it again, you know, it's like, mm. always very suspicious of that. Mm. Someone like Weller, his fans have been able to grow almost with him. Yeah, but well, all his fans are like um, kids from the um, the Shires, aren't they? Mm. Not to knock it. I like to think I, 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 always, I don't I don't like this sort of confusion with music. I mean, I like Elvis Presley. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I used to like Elvis Presley, but you know, I don't agree with his politics. I don't see what it's got to do with anything really. When I mean, you can like. Um, you can watch a film with John Wayne in it and like it, you know, it doesn't, you, know, you don't have to dislike it because... I think that's a danger when, when everybody agrees with the political viewpoints of the group. I think that's really sinister to me. Mm. Yeah. Do you not agree? Yeah, I do. It's like status quo, you know, everybody's got to wear the same clothes. And yeah. and it's a lot in the name, you know, <laughs> status quo. Damn, man. Sorry, go on. So, you, you've made a prolific amount of LPs. Right. Are you a workaholic or...? Yeah, a bit, a bit too much, yeah. How have you managed to maintain the pace when others have fallen by the wayside and...? I don't have any problem at all. My problem was not doing enough. Oh. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like knowing what not to do. Together twenty years, almost twenty years now. I mean, yeah. Does that does that kind of freak you out a bit? No. And do you think it's only un un unusual in rock terms? I think you know. I mean, it's, you know, it's like 
you know, it's, it's like James Lass, for instance, he's bringing LP out every week, isn't he? But the problem I have with record companies is they don't let me do like two LPs a year. The, 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 the whole idea of rock bands is that you take two years over one LP, which I think is a waste of time. So you've got a lot of like musos hanging around doing nothing. And by the time the marketing has decided it all and everything, the, the group's sick of playing the songs, which is why you've got this revivalism. You know, it's, it's a lot easier for the record companies to do it that way. They don't, they're not really interested in new products, really. Coming out. That's why dance is good because, well, it was, and I think it's going on the drain a bit, but you know, somebody records a tune and it's out four weeks later. I think that's really good. So, would you prefer? I mean, I know that you've always avoided the major labels, you've always stuck with. No, I've been on major labels. Yeah. But generally, they've been the smaller departments of those major labels. No, you just go through a lot of labels. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you happier to maybe keep the costs down? No, I don't keep the cost down. We're, we're quite expensive well, to run. Well, I mean, let me explain. It's been more prolific, release things quite regularly, not having yeah, new Yeah, 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 yeah. When, when financially, it would have been better for me. I got, I got to the point of one record company where they're actually paying us not to release an old person. Oh. That's it's cheaper to pay a load of money than, you know, do all the marketing and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's like a microcosm of British industry, isn't it? It's true. They'd rather show um, reruns of BBC programmes on Sky than they would they'd rather, you know, can't be bothered putting the effort in just to make a new programme, can they? But with, I mean, on that sort of scale, would you prefer to not have massive, massive blowout success, even though you are very successful all over the world, but in little pockets rather than have massive, massive success, sell out rounds all the time. Yeah, I'd be a lot richer, I'd be, I'd be a lot richer if I just brought an LP out every two years, yeah. And just, well, the, the thing I always get is go solo and get rid of, um, I keep her sort of expanding the group, you know. It's like, you know, having six or seven people is not cost effective, you know. Go solo. But I don't want to do it, you know. I'm sure you come across this stuff in your business. Mm. Yeah. Jump ship. <laughs> um, you still live, do you still live in Manchester? Yeah. Where do you live in Manchester? Salford. Still in Salford. At the moment, yeah. yeah. And then, obviously, you've got a track on the album called Cheating Hill. I was at Manchester University, by the way. So oh, was you? Oh, right, right. Where do you live? Wally Range? Uh, no, I stuck to St. Paul's Fallowfield and then. Oh, that's not strong. Long Sack for a bit. Ooh, Long Sack. I was, was just about to leave at that point, but... Uh, How long were you there? Three years? Three years to my degree and then eight months just kind of fucking about. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, big time. I mean, I, I, I'm from London and I found after three years, three and a half years, I kind of needed a bit more happening. I found, I managed to do a bit smaller. Yeah, it's, a, it's a big village, really. Yeah. There's a lot of crap talks about it, I think. But do you find there's still enough there to keep you? Keep no, that's why I like it. You know, cause, you know, Keep out of it, and that's good. Yeah. I lived in Edinburgh for quite a bit, about two years. That was terrible, I never got any work done, you know, there was so much to do. And, you know, just to go back to the humdrum. So, Cheating Hill, what's, what's that track about? Cheating Hill. <laughs> but for people who don't necessarily know Manchester. Well, it's the, the, the drummer wrote that song, actually. You know. She keeps telling everybody, you know, I'm sick of hearing about it. So, yeah, um, <coughs> it's just about, you get a lot of cruisers, you know, with the brothel area, it's like just right next to me. It's, it's in between where I live and, and the city. And it's sort of a very rough place. Mm. Yeah. But you get a lot of uh, cruisers, that's what it's about, you know, rich blokes in cars, so. Cruising, good. yeah, cutting the cracks, yeah, yeah. Trying to get away from the wife and all that. Um, you've got this, you know, John Peel from the Fall, he's kind of your arch defender, really. He's been there. Right. Since. How did you first come? Yeah, you know, John Peel from the Fall, he's kind of your arch defender, really. He's been there. Right. How did you first kind of meet him? Did you send him a demo or something? Or? No. So how did you start playing the records? 
I've only spoke to him twice in my life. Really? Yeah, nobody believes me. Has he written any insignias for you? That wasn't my idea, that was the record company. So have you ever listened to radio show now? Now and again, yeah. But there's just a misconception that we're big pals, you know. I met him about twice. I think he's got that thing, I don't, you know, it's always bad to meet people you like, isn't it? I've always been disappointed, haven't I? Have you been disappointed? New York Dolls. <laughs> no, no, not been disappointed, no. I can just take you back to kind of, you know, you started like 17. Met Link Ray, he was great, he was better than I thought. Who? Link Ray, the old 50s guitarist, instrumentalist. He was better than I thought. Um, what do you think about kind of band like the Sex Pistols before me? I don't know. Why? Do you know why they're doing it? They've just read up on it. Think so? Well, I don't think so. I, th I don't. I don't think that's a point. They keep telling you it's, it's money, though. I don't think so. You know what it is? I think it's like old fellas who are in the mid thirties crisis, and they, they, they need that hit. I have this problem with the group. You know, if they're not going on stage every two or three months, it's nothing to do with money. <laughs> you know, it's like that hit of going on stage and people looking at you and all that. So. So what, whatever they say, I don't believe them. They've lived it quite a long time for that. Yeah, I mean, they've they? got enough money on them, haven't they? Like Paul McCartney. I mean, I, I always, always puzzled me why Paul McCartney carries on. If I had Paul McCartney's mother, uh, money, I wouldn't... Mother. If I had Paul McCartney's money, I wouldn't even go out of the house. Man. It's just a, it's ego a lot of it. It's not why I'm doing it, you know, I'm just doing it. I think I've got something to say and I can't quite get to the bottom of it. Musically and the sort of lyric ones. So if you, you know, the, we had the Buzzcocks in recently. Oh, God. They're back doing stuff now. Isn't no, that's sad, isn't it? I'm, you know, they, all these bands came up with you in the beginning and I wonder how, it, what it is about Marquis Smith and the Four that has managed to keep going throughout with a prolific amount of albums. And now everyone else is coming back going, oh, Britpop, yeah, let's take our 10p's worth, if you know what I mean. I've got various theories on this. I think a lot of it is that the media is controlled by uh, blokes in the late 30s who want to relive their childhood, you know, through the buzzcocks and the jam. And the fall has nothing to do with it. The fall has never been anything to do with anything. Any trend. Yeah, you've got to keep uh, arm's length, I think. Yeah. So what were they like? Pete's nice, isn't he? Yeah. I didn't interview them, but um, I saw the, the rushes and uh Pete should have stayed solo, I think. Mm. I quite like some of them. Pete, Pete Jones, so well, the Buscox pay, uh, paid for our first record, yeah. We were all about 18, I mm. So I thought I'd compare them to you, because I've kind of taken the long way round and given it up and come back, and you've always been in there all the way through. Yeah, yeah I don't know. There's all this, you know, it's, it's very funny, it's, it's, only, it's, it's only very British, you know, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not like that the rest of the world, you know, people aren't really interested in the buzzcocks performing in uh, Japan or anything, really, no matter what they say. It's somewhat peculiarly sort of English, it's like a nostalgia. I think it's because the media is controlled by blokes who, when they were, I get it all the time. Every interview I do, it's like you said, you know, like I saw, you know, last time I listened to you was ten years ago. You know, it's like, you know, you don't know what I'm saying. It's like, it's like soccer, isn't it? All these like uh, middle class kids are getting into soccer all of a sudden, you know what I mean? They just like to relive the childhoods again, don't they? So. Mm. I mean, you know, ten years ago, if you just said to anybody who's hip on the Manchester scene, you know, 
Are you going down to the city again? They've got, oh, no, soccer's for thugs and all this. You know, now they're all going, they're all down there. You can't get tickets. Yeah, yeah, it is. What do you think of them? All right. The music doesn't do anything for me, really, but nice people, which makes a difference in groups. They're not bitchy or anything. You know. It's quite nice to hear from someone who's probably met them first hand, rather than all this press media fucking here. I think they're a bit open. I think they should shut their mouths some sort of bit. I think. Um, so you're doing a couple of songs today. What, yeah. What well, we're going to do a powder keg, which, funnily enough, is about my sister being in the, in the IRA bombing in 1992. <laughs> it's just really weird, that. Quite, um, <laughs> it is a bit, isn't it? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I think we'll do that, and we'll do um, an old song. The producer said he wanted an old song as well, so we've got to do the mixer, which is like from about. 92 as well. Yeah. Um, so you've already re released the Chisellers. Um, so what, what do you think the next release of the album will be? Sorry? The next release of, of this one? Well, I've got, uh, I've, got, I've got Peter Walkman's remix two tracks, actually. They sound pretty good. So. Peter Walkman? Yeah, I, I, did a, I did a single with uh, Dose, which is Pete Walkman's uh, new project. It's, it's pretty good. But they remixed two tracks of the old page, so we've got enough money to pay them for the mixes. We'll probably do that. <laughs> no, they're good, good, good kids, you know, they're up 18, 19, you know, it's nice. Mm. They always ask me things like, um, the Smith, somebody from the Smiths came in the studio, are they related to you? <laughs> <laughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> You were the Smiths, Mark. You know all about these guitar groups. <laughs> right, let me see what I've missed out here. You know, this LP is really strong. It's really, I've, I mean, I, Thanks. I wouldn't have thought it was my cup of tea, to be honest. Yeah, and for sure. Yeah. It, and it's ten years later that I've been listening to the other stuff. And how do you? How come you haven't slowed down, Mark? How come you haven't kind of mellowed out like a lot of people of your kind of generation or age maybe have? <laughs> Bloody old. I, know, I don't mean it. I'm not. I don't mean it like that. But you know, people tend to start off really. Like yeah, I know you mean. Yeah, yeah. Most down. men are dead when they're around 24, yeah, aren't they? Really? Young man <laughs> goes and what, what, why? Why is it still there for you? It's just, uh, it's just uh, the main thing. I, the main thing I, I, I'm into it. I mean, Ninety-nine percent of what I do isn't involved with that, but it's it's just to keep writing, you know. And it's like and I don't want to write books. And, uh, I don't want to write poetry. So I'll do it through that. Would you never consider writing no. poems? Like your lyrics on the Yeah. I don't, I don't like that world, actually. I, don't, I didn't like the theatre world at all, or the ballet or anything. It's, you think that rock and roll's horrible, you know? You get into that scene, it's terrible. And book publishers, good God. The good thing about rock music is, you know, I think that's why it's abused a lot. Sorry, I'm a boring everybody. <laughs> no, I think it's abused a lot because it is a quick avenue, you know, you can say what you want, really. Short, sharp, sharp. Yeah, you don't have to go and creep some guy in a suit, really, if you do it properly. Okay. I'm finished. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Is that okay? Yeah, it's great.